Hello and welcome to this week's weekly wind-up from the Kirklees Local TV studios. Joining me this week are our guests, the Bishop of Huddersfield, Dr. Jonathan Gibbs, and also we have Michelle Murray, who is a support worker for the charity Simon on the Streets. This week we will be finding out what the role of our new bishop entails and also learning about the work the charity Simon on the Streets are involved with. So, straight away, what's it like to be the first bishop of Huddersfield and what does the job entail? Thanks Milton, it's great to be with you. Uh, it's an enormous privilege to be the first bishop of Huddersfield. Uh, in terms of what it entails, it means that I'm based here in Huddersfield, uh, but I work with clergy and churches across the whole of Kirklees and Calderdale. Uh, that's Church of England churches, so there are about 120 churches and about 120 clergy as well, working in all the communities right across, across Kirklees uh, and Calderdale. I guess there are two sides to my job. Uh, one is encouraging and supporting the clergy and people of those churches to, to grow those churches, to encourage people to join and to grow in the Christian faith. Uh, but the other side of that is that they're not there just for themselves. They're there also uh, to express God's love for their neighbour and to share in making a difference in all the communities uh, right across Kirklees and Calderdale. Okay. When you say working with, what, what does it actually mean, working with these churches? Well, um, for me, uh, over the last three months, I started uh, at the beginning of December. I've been getting out and meeting people across those communities. Uh, my patch, the two boroughs, is divided into eight areas. So I've met with clergy and uh, lay people in the churches uh, across those eight areas. I'm trying to get to know and understand their communities. Uh, I want to work alongside people uh, to help encourage what they are doing already uh, to build up and grow their churches and also to encourage them uh, and to help them to think in fresh new ways about the way in which they engage with and serve the wider community. All that then, does that entail also spreading the gospel, outreach work and everything? Absolutely. I mean, if we're going to have healthy churches that are going to be able to make a difference to, to the lives of the community, uh, they need to be uh, churches which are encouraging people to come to the Christian faith, to get to know the love of God for themselves, uh, and to have the confidence to share God's love, uh, both in word and deed, uh, with the community in which they live. Okay. Interfaith groups. Do you work with them also? Absolutely. I was privileged uh, just a, a few weeks ago to go and uh, uh, meet with the Huddersfield Interfaith Council at the Gurdwara here in Huddersfield, just down the road, uh, to meet people from across all the faith communities. On that occasion, we were reflecting in particular uh, about the events, uh, the tragic events in Paris, uh, following, you know, the Charlie Hebdo uh, murders, and thinking about what it means to enjoy the privilege of free speech uh, but also uh, how we speak well of one another and encourage really positive relationships and dialogue among uh, faith communities and those of no faith. Okay, excellent. Do you have much work or links with the church through your charity? Um, in some ways, yes. We do find that um, faith groups play a big part in helping those in need in society. And so there is, um, there are faith groups out there uh, that play a, a big part of the work we do, um, not entirely faith-based, obviously, we do find that um, individuals, community groups, uh, businesses all want to help in some way, and we, we speak to many people from many different backgrounds that want to be involved in helping people. Okay, well, I'm going to hear a wee bit more about um, the charity later on, because I'm really interested in the, the diversity of that also. But, but, but to Bishop Jonathan, you're delivering um, this year Harold Wilson, uh, a lecturer at Harold Wilson about um, should the church stay out of politics? Well, first of all, there's the church view I'd like to ask you about. Should um, the church stay out of politics? And what's your view um, with regards to um, should the church influence politics or politics influence church or you know, never the twain shall meet, so sure. to speak? Yeah. Well, let's, let's take that question first about whether the church should stay out of politics. And, and the answer of that absolutely has to be no. God is concerned with the whole of life, so Christians must be concerned uh, about political life, along with every other aspect of human society. Uh, uh, nothing is outside God's concern and the reach of God's love. Uh, in terms of how the church is to be involved in the realm of politics, I think that, you know, that's a bigger question. Uh, and I think there are two aspects to that. I mean, one of the things at the moment is that uh, uh, the bishops of the Church of England recently published a document encouraging uh, politicians of all backgrounds and parties to think more about a vision 
for the kind of society we're trying to create, uh, rather than just you know, how much we can give away to who uh, in the election. And I think that's a big part of what the church can do, is to encourage politicians to have that big picture about the kind of society we're, having to, we're trying to create. And the other side of it uh, is also uh, to, in, to encourage people to think about the needs of those who otherwise don't have a voice for themselves. I mean, it's brilliant that I'm here today uh, with Simon on the Streets, because uh, that's a charity that's working with some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And the church uh, speaking up on their behalf is also an important part of a contribution we can make. I mean, I thank you for that, but do you think the church should be involved in politics? I mean, the government would have, have other, you know, have you staying out of politics? Do you reckon or do you want no, to... No, I'm, I'm not sure that's true. Um, if you've heard all of the politicians speak, I think most mainstream politicians would say that, that Christians should be speaking up and speaking out uh, into the world of politics, just as, uh, to encourage a healthy political debate right across our society. Uh, occasionally, they, they feel the church is having a go at them, uh, and uh, over certain issues, that may be true. Uh, but mostly, I, I think politicians would recognise the importance of, of a really lively, engaged debate about the whole work of politics in our society. Mm -hmm. And with regards to the church and politics? The church and politics. Well, um, whether it's um, a church or uh, another organisation, we, we all form a bigger part of um, society, of community, and I think that um, the church should be involved in politics. I think that it's important that the church is involved in politics because it's important that we all speak and give our own perspective on what community and what society should be. And I think it starts to become a, a dangerous society where we start to exclude certain groups from being involved in politics, whether that be a group that's based on religion or anything else, I think that we, we all have a part to play in uh, farming society into um, something that benefits everybody. And how much do you both link in, in terms of your partnerships in order to address A, homeless and also more, more integrated faith groups with the local politicians? you have much involvement? Um, in terms of the issue of homelessness, um, there are some very well-known examples of church groups becoming directly involved with the issue of homelessness. St George's Crypt in Leeds, uh, I'm going there this evening, uh, is a, a very well-known example of that. Uh, Christians together in uh, Calderdale, working in Halifax, are doing some excellent hands-on work with the homeless community. Um, and I'm sure there are uh, Christians uh, right across uh, Kirk Lees who would be uh, involved with organisations like Simon on the Streets, along with people of no faith. So, you know, in terms of direct involvement with vulnerable people, uh, uh, such as the homeless community, you know, that, that's something which I would very much encourage churches to look at, how, churches and individual Christians, to look at how they can get involved in that and how they can support that. I agree. I think that it's, it's a really good demonstration of how religious groups um, interacting and being involved with politics benefits people because there are organisations that Simon on the Streets has dealings with and um, has uh, relationships with such as for example the the mission in Huddersfield that provides a really valuable service for the most vulnerable people in Huddersfield and not just in Huddersfield but um, more regionally as well so many different organizations right from very small groups of individuals who are faith-based and want to go out and help people in a very practical way up to um, much bigger organisations um, such as the Church of England or um, the Methodist Church with the mission um, who are making a real difference in people's lives and it's just a really good example of how um, religion and politics do go well together. Okay. I mean, to pick up on your second question, which is how we engage with local politicians, let me just give you an example of that. Um, it, at the moment, of course, in the run-up to the general election, there are quite a lot of hustings events being organised. Often those are being organised by churches. In fact, principally, they are organised by churches or groups of churches uh, to get politicians together and to let people ask uh, real questions. Uh, but another example, for instance, is that I know that Kirk Lee's Council at the moment is developing a new strategy for working with the uh, voluntary community and faith sector. They're really keen to work with voluntary sector organisations, with faith groups and others, uh, to make a difference in our community. I had a meeting only yesterday with officials from the council. Uh, we're looking at how we can take that forward, and that's something that's happening both here in Kirklees and across in, in Calderdale as well. Okay, well, just bringing you back to that point as well, you have been quoted in the Huddersfield Examiner saying that um, bishops 
should be a voice for the voiceless. Who are the voiceless? Well, um, those who can't speak for themselves uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and that covers a whole multitude of people. Um, we're thinking today about the work of Simon on the streets. Uh, the homeless so often are excluded from uh, participation in political uh, discussion. Uh, there are the vulnerable and the elderly. Uh, there are refugees and asylum seekers. There's the young. There are marginalized groups and individuals. There's the elderly. You can go on and on and on. Uh, it's the people who aren't able, uh, because of their ability, their resources, or their lack of organization, to speak up for themselves. Uh, and it's about getting alongside and working with them and, and others who are working with them to make sure that their voice is heard, that everybody is heard uh, within our society. Uh, uh, thank you for that, John. Have we lost, society lost the sense of supporting each other? I don't no. think so, no. No. Sometimes it can seem that way um, from what we see and hear um, in the media, perhaps. But um, as an organisation, we work with, um, as I said earlier, different agencies, different organisations. We have businesses that approach us wanting to help and work in partnership with us, uh, groups from the community, individuals. So the feedback that we get from people is that um, people do care, people do feel an empathy towards those who are in need and they do want to help. I think it's there. Okay. But without the role of the church, all seems to be lost. The church seems to be the only one that, you know, you mentioned the mission earlier on, um, odd one or two of us may drop, you know, 20 pence in a, in, a, in a cup for somebody who's homeless. But, you know, society in general, um, I think there's a sense of that we've lost the sense of serving each other. I think you can feel that way sometimes, but um, some of the organisations that work with us are big businesses, they're mm. uh, large organised groups. I don't feel as though it's solely down to faith-based mm. groups. Okay. Um, I think that Obviously, faith provides a really good starting point. Whether you have a religious belief or not, the message of religion is, is to look after each other and to, to help those that are in need. And so, yes, faith-based groups are important, mm -hmm. but no, my experience and our experience mm -hmm. as an organisation is that although it may not be easy to see from a, a, a standing observer's point of view, um, that no, I, I do still think that that empathy is out there and perhaps mm. the bigger issue is that people don't really know what the best way is to help and that if that was, um, if we were more aware as a society of the issues that people face and how we can help, that I think you might see that a lot more. Okay. Sure, I mean, I think I'd very much want to, to agree uh, with Michelle on all of that. I mean, I think it's a, it's a bit like the old school report, isn't it? You know, uh, could do better. Uh, th there's a lot more that we could do. But if you look around us, you look at the enthusiasm that goes into children in need, that goes into comic relief. You know, there's a, there's a huge amount of energy out there to, to want to do something uh, for the good of others, whether in this country or, or indeed, uh, you know, elsewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, there's certainly a, a lot of evidence that people involved in faith groups are far more likely to be involved in volunteering. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot that we can do uh, to build up that sense of, of community and belonging to one another and serving one another uh, within our local churches. But equally, uh, with regard to church and faith groups, it's a case of could do better yeah. uh, and encouraging people to be more outward looking uh, and to, to play their part within the local community for the sake of building up the community. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you, for Michelle. Um, more, more local news. The Dewsbury reporter has written that the BBC are to are to go ahead with a truthful, unvarnished, two-part drama about the disappearance of the young schoolgirl, Sharon Matthews. Sharon disappeared when she was walking home from school in February 2008. The search for, the, the search for Sharon ended after 24 days when she was found hidden by her mother Karen and Michelle Donovan. They were later found guilty of kidnapping, false imprisonment and perverting the course of justice. The drama will be based on the responses of women in the Jewsbury community rather than the actual abduction of Sharon. The writer Neil McKay was quoted by saying, the drama will tell a story of people pulling together for the sake of a child and that it is hoped um, it will have something to say not only about the community who were caught up in the events but about our wider society too. 
do you really feel that we should be having um, a, a, a two-part drama about Sharon Matthews and the mother and everything else? I know Niels said that it's about the community, but surely, you know, the little said about this, the better. Well, everything that happened to do with Shannon Matthews was desperately sad and tragic and completely wrong. Um, and it is a very painful episode. And, and I hope the BBC are, are enormously sensitive uh, to the danger of, of actually, you know, kicking a community that's already feeling pretty, pretty yeah. hurt. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have been told by the BBC that the focus is going to be on the way in which the community pulled together. Yeah. And out of this, uh, that there's actually a good news story to tell mm -hmm. about the way that people together pull together in the Dewsbury Moor community. Now, that's, it's a tough call, and we're going to have to wait and see how that's handled. Um, but I, I guess in one sense, uh, the BBC and, and drama producers in our country shouldn't shy away from difficult issues. Uh, and maybe it's a question of, well, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it, and let's see how they handle that. Mm -hmm. But I hope they will be very sensitive uh, to what has already been a very hurt community over this whole episode. What do you think, Michelle? It's something that makes me immediately feel a little bit uncomfortable because, yes, it's a very sensitive issue and I always feel a little bit reluctant to be involved when I hear these types of documentaries or stories because it's such, uh, as Jonathan said, it's such a, a sad case. You know, everything about it from start to finish is just absolutely tragic and it's not something that I like to see um, dressed up and presented as entertainment even when it's sometimes disguised as documentary. documentary. I, I do, I, I am comforted somewhat by the fact that it is going to, it's not going to focus on Shannon, it's not going to focus on the family, it's going to focus on the, um, the as you said, the community pulling together and the way that uh, a community can make things happen and if that's how it's dealt with in a sensitive way then I'd be interested to see it. Uh, but yes, uh, it's one of those things that makes you immediately think, hmm, a little bit uncomfortable well, with that. Well, I hope they do a really good job, but, you know, what really scares me is that once it's finished and it's out there um, to the wider public viewing, it's too late then, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. yeah? So let's, let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, thank you, Michelle and Bishop Jonathan. After the break, we're going to hear from Michelle about the charity called Simon on the Streets. Um, and they're doing amazing things in our community, um, helping the homeless. See you after the break. However large or small your business, attracting new customers requires dedication and a lot of patience. Just like fishing, but you also need the right gear. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, lures, tackle box, tackle bag, net, bait, gas gloves, clothes, and pocket knife lunch. Or you could simply advertise with KLTV. Online, grow your business and your clientele. KLTV, your vision made reality. Should have gone to KLTV. Welcome back. And we are joined with Bishop Jonathan Gibbs, our first Bishop of Huddersfield, and Michelle Murray, who is a support worker for the charity Simon on the Streets. Michelle, could you tell me who is Simon and why does everybody want to sleep with him? <laughs> well, there's two answers to your question, actually. Uh, the first is that Simon um, is based on Simon of Cyrene, and Simon was the man who helped Christ to carry the cross, and uh, that is a metaphor for our organisation in walking alongside people and although we don't carry their burden for them, we support them in their journey. Um, that's who Simon was, but in today's terms, who Simon is, is we are Simon. And that's not just about we as an organisation. Uh, Simon is the community. Simon is the individual who takes a moment out of their day to speak to a, a vulnerable person and to show that somebody cares. And so it, it's a very open definition, really, is that we, as, as a community, are Simon. Okay, and what does homeless actually mean, and what does it mean to be homeless? The definition of homelessness is not very easy. Um, for us as an organisation, we focus on the people who are rough sleeping, who have got uh, a risk of being uh, rough sleepers. And... Uh, Obviously, there's um, 
a bit of a wider definition than that. It's a, about a lot more than having a, a roof over your head. Um, when we start to work with somebody, they will be a rough sleeper or they'll be at risk of rough sleeping. Um, but it's about what's led to that point that we focus on as an organisation because we deal with people with a range of complex needs and um, things such as mental health needs or addiction or um, unresolved trauma from the past. And we recognise that it's these things that being homeless is a manifestation of these problems and when we work with somebody we don't stop to work with them the moment that they access housing because we understand that unless these issues are addressed and resolved that that person's going to continue to need support to maintain a tenancy and to maintain a safe and a healthy lifestyle um, and so for us it, it's more about all those issues that lead to the point of homelessness and of rough sleeping. Okay. Do, does your church, or does the church have an interest with the homeless and, and how is that? Absolutely. I mean, I, we mentioned earlier on this afternoon a number of the organisations in Huddersfield, the Mission, uh, in Halifax, in Leeds, uh, those are some, some great examples. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, people encouraging individual Christians to get involved in that, uh, you know, that's, that's certainly a priority. Uh, and the other thing we can do, and it's something the bishops have sought to do, is to, is to add a voice uh, to the importance uh, that society and uh, government uh, is aware of the needs of the homeless community. And do you, are you aware of how many homeless people are in, in Kirklees? What's the stats, either of you? Uh, well, I can answer that for you okay. in that there is no answer to that question. Okay. And the reason for that is because you, you cannot capture an accurate number of how many people are homeless based on, A, what's your definition of homelessness? Because, for example, um, you, you can have a place to sleep for the night, but you would still be defined as homeless. So how would you acknowledge and recognise those people when you start to do a count of homelessness? And also the transient nature of being homeless means how do you identify people? Um, a person who's sleeping in a shop doorway this evening might be sleeping on somebody's sofa tomorrow night, and so it's Call difficult. Sofa, surf. sofa, sofa surfing. Sofa surfing, yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually, for us as an organisation, I think it's important to say that the numbers aren't important, the people are important. Mm -hmm. What's important for us is that we know that there's this group of vulnerable people out there and that we can have. Uh, an estimate and a snapshot of what that number may be but for us we're not an organization that focuses on numbers we focus on yeah, yeah. the people absolutely I mean I think that's crucially important that this isn't about statistics it's about people it's about relationships and it's about including those people in society rather than pushing them to the margins okay. I just want to touch on a quote that you you um, I think it was the bishops that mentioned earlier on this year and um, there is a deep contradiction in the attitudes of society which celebrates equality in principle yet treats some people, especially the poor and vulnerable, as unwanted and valued and unnoticed. Um, I'd just like to say, do you think the homeless is, does it imply the homeless are in there? Or would you like to see something more explicit from the church that literally says homeless? And I know implicitly you, the voice of says is the homeless, but Maybe, I don't know, do you think the church should have more of a say when they make statements like these about the homeless? Um, I'm not sure whether it needs to very specifically mention homelessness because I think, um, as I've said earlier, the issue of whether you have a place to mm. live or not is the tip of the iceberg and it's the other issues which have been addressed in this statement about being vulnerable, about being unwanted, about not being seen as valued by society. Mm. Those really are the crux of um, what we aim to resolve with the people that we work with. So whether you specifically mention homelessness or not, I don't think it would be unhelpful to mention it. But I think that the real important issues are covered within that statement. Okay, we're coming to the new. Uh, well, we're coming to the election on the seventh of, mm. of May. What would you like to see the government address regarding the agenda of the voiceless? Or the homeless? <laughs> Well, I think one of the things that concerns me about the whole way the debate is being conducted at the moment is that day by day, each of the political parties is trotting out a set of promises to try and get people to vote for them. 
Uh, and of course, by definition, those, uh, those issues are largely being addressed to the people who will vote, uh, and homeless and vulnerable and excluded people will not. Uh, and there's a failure to, to draw anything like a bigger picture of what it means to be an inclusive society where everybody has a part. And I think that's a real lack in the current debate. And it's certainly something which uh, we, the churches, uh, are concerned to contribute. Uh, and it's certainly going to be an area I'm touching on in that Harold Wilson lecture next week at Huddersfield University. Now that, that's on the 23rd. It's on the 23rd. And on that day, your event is happening, I do believe. Yes, um, you, you asked earlier about why does everybody want to sleep with Simon, and I didn't actually touch on that point, but um, one of our fundraising events that we have at the moment is Will You Sleep With Simon? And it's a sponsored sleep out event, and it's happening on the 23rd of April at the uh, stadium in Huddersfield. And um, anybody who wanted to register to participate in that event can do that uh, online on our website. Clearly, we can't give you a, a real experience of what it's like to, to be a rough sleeper, nor would we want to do that for anybody. Uh, but what we can do is to give people some degree of understanding of what it might be like to not have a bed for the night and maybe to... Um, give that person an opportunity to develop, develop some empathy towards um, our client group. And on that same day, as you're saying, thanks for that, Michelle, your, what's, your, what's your keynote speech is going to be about? And will you be encouraging people to sleep with Simon as well? Um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm sorry I won't be available that <laughs> night because I'm otherwise engaged, but I, you know, I'd be delighted to support maybe in the future. You can take me up on that challenge. What I'm going to be addressing is the kind of thing I've been, I've been saying, really. I, I hope... Um, I, I will be raising the issue of uh, what kind of society are we creating? Uh, is it a society that is genuinely inclusive, that has a place for everybody, and doesn't just uh, focus on uh, those who are going to get out and vote uh, and have got a nice warm home to go to, uh, but it also remembers the excluded and marginalised? Uh, are we creating uh, a society in which everybody is valued and everyone can play their part? I think that's my fundamental message, and I hope that's a, that's a challenge to politicians of every, of every party. And what are you hoping for after the 23rd? What would people come away with after that? Well, we'd like people to come along and enjoy the event and um, learn more about the work that we do with Simon on the Streets. Um, it's an opportunity for us to um, give people a bit more of an understanding about why we do the work that we do because there are services and agencies out there that provide services in terms of addiction treatment and housing and health and it's important for people to know why we work differently and why we have to exist as an organisation to serve those people who are marginalised, who are excluded because they're unable to engage with services in the current format and so it's nice for people to come along and get some awareness of what we do and yes to get an experience of what it's like to not have a bed for the night and hopefully to um, give people a better understanding of um, the types of difficulties then that um, our service users face. Okay, well, I want to thank you both for, for coming to the Kirkley's local studio. I wish you all the very best in your endeavours as the, the Bishop of Huddersfield. And for you on the 23rd, sleeping with Simon, um, we're going to have a crew down there as well, so we, we support what you're doing wholeheartedly. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Both of you, very much. Well, thank, you thank you both thank you. very much. Thank you. Um, more news. Um, one of Huddersfield Town football club heroes, Deroy Facey, accused of match fixing. The Huddersfield race striker, Deroy, 34, is alleged to have become involved in the ugly side of the game. By acting as a middleman for two men who have already been convicted of match fixing, opening the Crown Court's case against both Facey of Woodhouse Hill Far Town and Swa Ibu, 25 of London. At the start of the three-week trial, prosecutor Nick Mather told jurors they would not need to know anything about football to try the defendants. Mr Mather told the jury panel, football in this case is really nothing more than a means to an end. If you would like to get in touch with Kirkley's Local TV, please email us at info at kirkleysocaltv.com or Twitter at The Weekly Windup. Thank you very much. See you next week.